Are you needing a keyboard that will take up less room and give that thumb a hardcore workout? Well, you could go get a regular 10 keyless style, or you could think outside the box with the most dankest palm holder on the market, the Razer Tartarus V2 one-handed keypad. Now look, I have the exact same concerns you have. Is this gonna be worth it to make my PC experience that much better, especially for someone like me with editing and especially those late night jam sessions? Wait, no. Well, guys, no, 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 no. No, computer work, computer work. I've been looking at one-handed keypads for quite a while now. Specifically, I have been waiting on this one to go on sale and it finally did on Amazon for 50 bucks. Now, when you're looking for this type of hardware, there really aren't a ton of options. You've got all those, you know, smaller brands, Red Dragon's kind of up there, Logitech makes their older one, but this one specifically looked like it was gonna fit those needs for obviously gaming, but more specifically, you know, editing and keeping things nice and concise that I just had to give it a try. I really just wanted to see what this is for and does and who it's for. The main appeal is the 32 programmable keys and buttons. I can set three different profiles with all my favorite macros. The keys are mecha membrane and the clickiness is a little bit less than blue and then obviously you have that bit of a squish from the membrane. I definitely wouldn't call these switches quiet. There's still quite a bit of click in there, but I've definitely had way worse with that cherry switch garbage. Of course, Razer added 300 billion color options to ensure that you'll never stop tinkering with the layout every single time you turn it on. So with that, each key and button can individually be set for a very, very custom layout. We have a roller here and I still can't decide which finger I want using it. Your thumb rests on an eight-way joystick that can transform into a D-pad by removing the knob. I definitely prefer it with the cap off, giving it that classic style. You've got unlimited macro length for whenever you need to reply to tons of mean YouTube comments. All the macros and lighting are set up in Razer's Synapse software. I really do prefer Logitech and Corsair's control softwares for all their RGB stuff and all their peripherals. One thing that's really gonna throw a lot of people off and definitely threw me off, if you'll notice, all these keys are pretty straight. I kind of uh, fixed that a little bit while I was playing by just kind of diagonally setting my hand on the keypad. Looking at a regular keyboard, everything is very, very offset. Nothing is running, you know, except for the very side buttons. Nothing's running just in a straight line. Using that, it almost feels like the top four or five buttons are shifted completely over. The WASD, not too bad, but it really takes some getting used to to get your hand feeling correct. But with that, you wanna get set up the right way, and that's by making your own profile for each game or editing software, anything productive you're gonna be doing. With that, we're gonna be getting into a MOBA, we're gonna be playing Warzone, and then we're gonna be looking at Premiere Pro and see what kind of things we can set up here and how well we can optimize it for these op taps, tag these softwares. For this one, I'm running the static, which is going to be across the Logitech, everything else as well. I just want to keep them all nice and matched. You'll see I've got like different chroma effects. This one's going to be your regular, you know, color wave. For each one, I'm going to go across and match it all up. It's going to look nice and pretty. But the problem we do have is because they're not individually lit, it's just an underlying pad underneath there. It's going to have color bleed. So between the green to the blue, you're gonna get that color mixture and it's not gonna be as sharp. Hear that clickiness? Fun chaotic mess. Right off, I started with the MOBA style smite because I thought I could just run the default setup here for the keypad, but I quickly figured out that that wasn't really gonna work and I needed to map everything around to make it fit right. It took a little bit of time, but once I went in and looked at all the key maps inside of Smite, I was able to go back and cross-reference and switch it back and forth to get all the buttons exactly where I needed them. Surprisingly, I was playing really comfortably right away. I was able to quickly hop in, all the hot keys felt right, uh, I had everything exactly where I normally would on my keyboard, and I didn't notice too big of a difference. It was still pretty weird in a few spots. Uh, some buttons had to flip to the other side, to kind of make it work within the way this is set up. But really after 30 minutes and just one match, by the end of it, I was running pretty good. I, I felt pretty comfortable. I already felt that groove or not having to consciously go, which button does this do? Uh, it just kind of flowed right into what I was doing. So we're gonna hop into Warzone itself. We're gonna go over, take a look at the key bindings to figure out what we want set. We're gonna leave the ones that are set in Warzone itself. For the button, we set F. I'm gonna put space on the mouse. 
On the D-pad, we set Alt, B, and M, and then B set for alternative fire. Everything else is mapped where we want it, just naturally, because it's gonna be built around the WASD. Let's go ahead and search for a match here and see if we can't get whooped real fast. First true test, can we use our parachute, and can we get to the ground safely? Well, let's see, we got parachute, cut parachute, and parachute. Ugh, I hate it being crooked found someone worse than me. That was very successful. It's weird though, every time I go up to something, I'm having to decide, okay, which one is this set at? Damn, maybe I do just need to reroute. I kind of want jump and use to be the same thing. Well, no, would I be jumping to... Doesn't matter. Didn't I shoot him like eight times already? Not a fan on it, a war zone. I feel like we have to move too fast. My fingers aren't ready for it, and I don't think they would. It doesn't feel right, especially after everything I've learned. I think it probably could be good for that, but it's one of those things too, if that's what you're buying it for and you're like me and it just doesn't work, or even if it could work, I don't think I'd ever be as good on this as I am on the keyboard. I don't really feel any deficiency with it. Let's move to Premiere Pro. I'm gonna cut these right up. We have our select as V, up as one. Three is gonna be select, close, open. We've got the ones by it, in and out. Six we've got is our open big, 13 backspace, eight is undo. You get the point. There's no real reason for me to show you specifically what all I'm using for it. You can see it here, which isn't gonna do too many people much good. I can come over here and what used to be having to say, I would go to here, I would do paste attributes. Well, now I can just press 14. Now it's gonna be control alt V instead of having to go control alt V. Instead of having to go on the keyboard or go the long way of right clicking or something, that's gonna be a huge increase in my efficiency while I'm going. So when it comes to there being 32 buttons, there's gonna be just absolutely enough for most people. When it comes down to it, what does this thing do right? Who is it for? I think it definitely has struggles when it comes to more fast pace games or more complex tasks or well, mainly games, especially whenever I played Warzone. I had just an immense amount of trouble getting it to feel right. And I do typically play more controller, but I, I switched back and forth with the keypad and with my keyboard that I was using before. And there was really a huge difference in the comfort level, even after trying the keypad for an hour, hour and a half. But running Smite, I, within 30 minutes, it felt completely comfortable even switching buttons from the left to the right and from what I'm normally using on the keyboard. I was really just subconsciously able to work that into the rotation of what I was using for editing or if you're just trying to make yourself more productive by setting a lot of macros for things that you do commonly in your computer, it's always gonna take a good bit of time. I have the macro intensive mouse from Logitech and so I have even you know more 12 buttons I believe that I can set and that I have been using for my editing task and this can help a lot with uh, especially like the, the roll wheel and the buttons on the thumb and especially you know just everywhere but it takes quite a bit of time to get all of that set up just right and to obviously get yourself to where you're using them in a way that feels comfortable and especially where you feel like you're actually saving time and that buying this was a good purchase, which that's always the biggest worry is, am I wasting my money? Is this gonna go sit in a box and I'm never gonna use it again? Hopefully not. I don't think this will for me or it might. Am I gonna keep it here? I'm actually still on the fence. I, I do think it's awesome. And I do think for some people uh, like just all day editors. There's always these, uh, you know, elaborate, expensive setups that are for people on workstations that are editing or doing any graphic work, things like that. I think this can definitely help out a ton because you want to have your keyboard for other things. Or sometimes I just want to push this thing out of the way and I want to just go down to a smaller profile. And if you're a gamer, you want the clickiness, you want something that makes you pro MLG, put it on your lap real fast, clicky boy. It's perfect for you, especially if you can get it for like 50 bucks. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I did. That's what we do. This video took so long. I couldn't figure out where to put everything. I just kept going back and forth. It's been a mess. Coronavirus is messing with me. Thanks. No, 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 no. For, uh, it's, for, uh, it's for computer work. For computer work, computer work, computer work, computer work.